Hi everyone, uh, my name is Wally Young, as he said. I'm the product manager for AR Toolkit at Daiquiri. I've been at Daiquiri for roughly about three and a half years, and um, when we acquired AR Toolkit last year and brought Ben and Phil over, um, I joined the team and started working with them on AR Toolkit. So, I guess the first thing is to say, you know, what is AR Toolkit? Um, probably in this crowd, it's, it's an AR SDK that doesn't need much of an introduction, but it's an open source, Tracking and Recognition SDK. Um, we are one of the oldest and most downloaded AR SDKs. We were first demonstrated in 1999 at SIGGRAPH. And we've been had over a million downloads by now, easily. The purpose of the talk today is to put a little framing around where we've been with AR Toolkit, going up to AR Toolkit 5, what we've done since we released AR Toolkit 5 open source, and then paint a little bit about what we're thinking about, what we think is important, and what we're working towards uh, with AR Toolkit 6. So as I said, AR Toolkit is an open source tracking recognition SDK. We run on everything. We run on iOS, OS X, Android, Windows, Windows Mobile, Linux. Back in the day, we used to run on the SGI IRIX. We used to run on Symbian. We have been pretty much on everything. Um, we started with square fiducial markers. And in 2004, we added NFT tracking so we could then track and recognize images. Air Toolkits had a really long history, as I said before. It started with Professor Hirokato, who was now at the NARA Institute of Science and Technology. Then he was at the University of Washington's HIT Lab. Um, and in 1999 was the first public demonstration. 2001, uh, Air Toolkit was released open source, and that was with the square tracking. In 2001, they also incorporated Air Toolworks, which began selling a pro version of Air Toolkit. That's where Ben and Phil, who are on our team, join us from. 2004, NFT, or image tracking, was added to Air Toolkit. We also released version 2 open source that year. In 2008, we added iPhone 3G support and then continued to develop on the platform. 2011, we added Android support and continued platform support. This is when we added Windows uh, Store SDK, so you could run on both Windows 8 desktops and the Windows mobile platform. And then 2015, we were acquired by Daiquiri. Pro version, everything that was done has been open sourced. Um, there's been numerous spin-offs from Air Toolkit. We've had FLAR Toolkit, which brought Air Toolkit to Flash and ActionScript. We had NIAR Toolkit, which brought AR Toolkit to C-sharp. It's been really popular in Japan. We've had JSA AR Toolkit, which is recompiled for JavaScript. I have some really cool stuff to announce about that. And there was SLAR Toolkit, which was ported for Silverlight. But what have we been doing in the past year? So AR Toolkit was announced uh, free and open source last year at AWE. And the past year has been great for us. We replaced the SURF algorithm with the FREAK algorithm, which meant AR Toolkit is now is completely open source and free to use. Um, there are some patent complications around SURF. FREAK is an algorithm that we can use for free, so there's no complication to using this in a commercial or a private app. We were integrated into the Unreal Engine twice by community members. Um, one of them is for sale on the Unreal Store. I believe the other one is coming to open source soon. We were integrated into the OSVR project. If you guys don't know open source VR, it's, uh, I think it's primarily done by Razer, but it's a great open platform for VR. They have their own reference hardware. And we took Air Toolkit 5, and we recompiled it within Scripten to run JavaScript. So now Air Toolkit 5, the latest version, is back in the browser. Um, it's on our GitHub. It's free and open source. You can get it. Uh, it's JSA Air Toolkit 5. So please check that out. In evangelism and education, we were at Laval Virtual, and we were at ISMAR this year. Uh, we talked with some really cool computer scientists. Um, we've given summer schools at the University of South Australia. Uh, we had some really cool examples around collaborative play and uh, collaborative space there. We had another summer school at Telkom University in Indonesia. Um, there is, seems to be a very large drive for AR storybooks there, trying to get the younger generation to read more. Uh, we've given hackathons in Dublin. 
We've talked at Colorado School of Mines, and we've given a class at MIT. So since we open sourced, we've had 35,000 visitors per month to our site. We've had over 71,000 downloads of the version 5 SDK. There's 235 forks on our GitHub today, and 88 forks of our Unity plugin today. And when we first did this, a lot of people were asking why, you know. The first thing is, if we want the AR community to grow, price and license should not be a barrier to entry. Image tracking and recognition is not a new problem. AR Toolkit has been trying to figure this out since 1999. And we believe that the more barriers we put in the way to developers getting onto AR, the harder it's going to be to bring AR everywhere. And that's what we're trying to solve. Uh, when we released AR Toolkit 5 open source, we released it with the LGPL license. Um, I still think that that was the right license to use because that means it's free to use in your commercial app, it's free to use in your personal app, it doesn't get infected by the GPL. But if you make AR Toolkit better, we ask that you contribute that back and then AR Toolkit gets better for everybody. And that's kind of what the heart of an open source project is. It's trying to make it better for everyone. We wanted to encourage innovation in AR, and we wanted to share transparency, transparently. Um, and this is inherent in open source. I mean, everything we do, all of our algorithms, I mean, it's all there to read, to use, to reuse, and to learn from. I mean, you can go to our GitHub and look at it today. We don't want to give you a black box. We don't want research to be done on top of black boxes. We think knowledge is meant to be shared, and uh, that's part of what we're trying to do with AR Toolkit. And we also obviously want to raise understanding and awareness around AR. I mean, obviously for this crowd, um, we've already bought it, bought in. But uh, the more that we train the user and the more that we raise the average level of understanding around AR, we can focus less on the how and the why and more on the what and why that's important and come closer to that idea of AR everywhere. Long before smartphones, AR Toolkit first ran on the desktop. We added capabilities that weren't there before, and we enabled people to do amazing things. Then we were one of the first AR SDKs on the smartphone. Uh, this is AR Toolkit running on an iPhone 3G or 3GS, um, but there's been reports of seeing AR Toolkit on Symbian as early as 2005. Today we find ourselves with a whole new class of devices and a whole new user. We have handheld devices whose screens are larger than my laptops, with GPUs that blow older phones out of the water, that blow older desktops out of the water. We have wearable devices that try to understand the world around us and are trying to compete with the real world for video updates. And we believe along with this that our users have changed too and that the expectations around what you get out of your tech have changed as well. So the thought is, is what if you could start over? What if you could do, take everything you've learned and do it all again? And that's what we're doing with AR Toolkit 6. AR Toolkit 6 is a ground up development effort. We're rewriting it for these new devices and these new users because we have a completely different set of resource restraints than what we had before. And this is about moving forward unencumbered by some of the legacy restraints that we had there before. So AR Toolkit 6 is a fast and modern source sorry, mad, modern open source, tracking and recognition SDK. So we want to target researchers, we want to target developers, we want to target teachers, and we want to help people share about AR, learn about AR, and empower people's research in AR. And that's what we've designed this toolkit for, and these are the people we're trying to target. When we release, we're releasing on Linux, Android, OS X, and iOS. Um, so, a lot of pretty words and we're losing a platform. That was Windows for those of us playing the home game. Well, not exactly. We have a brand new image tracker. It was built from the ground up at our vision sensor group in Sunnyvale here. Um, it uses freak features, just like version 5.3 for initialization, but then we use things like optical flow along with template matching. And we find that our pose estimation is much more robust. Uh, and frankly, I don't think we've ever tracked better. Um, our image training has gotten significantly easier. 
Uh, who here has used Air Toolkit 5 or below? Sweet. So before you would say, okay, here's my JPEG. I'm going to pass that into the command line tool. I'm going to, okay, for these distances, these are the effective APIs. We have to run through a training process. We output a bunch of files. You then load those into Air Toolkit. In the easiest case with AR Toolkit 6, you give it the path to the image, it generates the data on the fly, and it begins tracking. Nothing else to do. There's a lot more to talk about that, and it gets a lot easier, but uh, I'll save that for a later day. Here's a real world example. On the left, we have AR Toolkit, uh, Toolkit 5.3, and on the right, we have the new tracker that's going into AR Toolkit 6. You'll notice that immediately, a lot of the jitter that you used to see is gone unless you get really, really close, and then you start to get a little bit better. The content that you're seeing is from an app called Altera. It was made in-house by Daiquiri. Um, for those of you that are Unity devs, uh, do we, how many Unity devs do we have in the audience? Sweet. This is our version of BattleBots. Um, it's going to be shipping with AR Toolkit 6, and it's going to show you how best to use AR Toolkit, and we're giving all of the assets and materials around this for free as well. Um, and part of what we're doing is we've sort of built this story around this world called Altera. And we want to engage with the community and maybe flesh that out, give it more content, give it a little more life to it. If you go to our booth, um, you can see both version 5 and version 6 running. Um, see it for yourself. Um, for those of you that came today, thank you all very much. Um, we have a special first edition Altera comic books. When Air Toolkit 6 ships, you'll be able to use that to activate the experiences within Altera. We also have a planner tracker. And this is sort of cool, because I don't think many developers have had the option to do this before, where you open up a camera feed, and then we try and find a plane. Once we find the dominant plane, we begin tracking that plane. And now you can place AR content in the world around you without the need of a marker or an image. And whether it started from that image and the story continues onto your table or onto the floor around you, you have a way to display content that way. And this also is completely free and open source. Um, we're going to be launching this first on iOS. Um, what you're seeing here is actually a very early version of Crayola Color Alive. It's from maybe a year and a half to two years ago, uh, running this version of the tracker on an iPad mini. Um, needless to say, upon release, you're going to see substantial improvements, and especially on modern devices, it's going to be awesome. Also, um, and I guess this goes without saying, Air Toolkit is a toolkit. Um, when we release, we are releasing with the image tracker and the planner tracker, but we're meant to be extended. We're meant to have an open framework so that if a new cool type of tracking or a new open source slam tracker or something else comes out, that can be integrated, contributed back, and now you have more options in your toolkit for doing AR. That's kind of what we're all about. Along with this, we have a brand new Unity plugin. Um, so we've gotten a lot of feedback on the forums. We've got a lot of feedback via email. We've gotten a lot of feedback via GitHub. And then every time we taught a lesson somewhere or we were at a hackathon, we got to see users using AR toolkit all the time. And there was general bins, you know, we had this type of frustration, or we ran into these problems, or I didn't know AR Toolkit was doing this kind of work for me, or that it could do this kind of work for me. And we're trying to integrate all that feedback into make an AR SDK for Unity that gets you from zero to AR faster, that we let you know what you need to care about and what we need to care about and what work we're going to do for you in a very transparent way. And that's just to get AR development out there as seamlessly as possible. Goes without saying, uh, AR Toolkit is an open source project. With AR Toolkit 6, we will continue to be an open source project. Um, when we released AR Toolkit 5, as I said, it was LGPL. Um, I'm happy to say that what we release is going to be as permissive, if not more permissive, than LGPL v3. Um, and that basically goes down to, like, on Air Toolkit 5, say that you're developing on an app for some new version of iOS, say it's iOS 12. And AV Foundation's out the window, and there's a new video input framework. If you do that, and then you build this really awesome killer app on top of it, with the LGPL, your app is still yours. 
there's no infection. What changes is that when you added that video framework to AR Toolkit, that's part of AR Toolkit, and we ask that that's contributed to open source so everyone can take advantage of that. That's what the LGPL means. It's not the sort of I statically linked and now Daiquiri owns everything I ever made. And in fact, we had a special clause for static linking, so that wasn't an issue for the earlier versions of iOS. So Ares Toolkit 6 will continue to be free and open source. You don't need to purchase a license. You don't need to register for an account. You don't need to phone home with our SDK. And in fact, inbuilt calibrations will be supplied for a variety of devices, depending on what your platform is. And you don't need to give away what you build with it, which is most important. And I think that's where a lot of confusion has come in the past with GPL style license or copyleft style licenses. So that leaves one last question. I'm happy to say that Air Toolkit 6 will be coming this fall. I can't give you a date today, but if you follow us on Twitter or Facebook or any of the social media, you guys will be the first to know because that's how we're going to announce it. And when it's available, that's also how you're going to be the first to know because that's probably where we're going to talk about it. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for coming out today. Um, here's all the links for the Air Toolkit community. If you haven't tried it yet, please download it. If you have tried it before, but it was an older version, give it a shot again. Um, Daiquiri's information is at the bottom. We have an expo coming up called 40 Expo. Also this fall, I think. Please take a look at that. Follow us on Twitter. That's how you're going to get the updates for when Air Toolkit 6 is available. And I think we have a couple minutes for some Q&A if there's any questions. Any plans for external uh, GPS type tracking? Uh, so uh, using GPS as part of the, the tracking integration? Yeah, so uh, location-based tracking. So you're out in a green field, you want to put something somewhere and not have it be image-based tracking at all. It's definitely something we've looked at before. Um, it's not something that we've scoped out in terms of where Air Toolkit 6 is right now. Um, but there is definitely an easy way, should that sort of framework be available, to integrate that into Air Toolkit 6 at the very least. Hi. Um, augmented reality is not only visual. Are there any plans to add additional sensor support? Or? Abs absolutely. Um, and actually, that's one of the reasons the planner tracker is only coming out on iOS first. It's IMU assisted. So um, we're, use, we're fusing both the camera with the IMU to be able to sort of get that more accurate pose when you're only tracking off of the prepared, unprepared surface. I saw a question over here. Uh, what about 3D object uh, tracking? Is, is your image tracker just 2D right now, or is there any thoughts yeah. for moving into 3D and occlusion related to that? Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, the tracker is a 2D planner tracker. So we track planes. Um, obviously, there are some ways to fake it. You can determine planes at arbitrary angles. But um, we don't have a 3D tracker for this right now. Um, and then what was the second half of your question? I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's also not inbuilt yet. Um, but we have a lot of devices coming that come with fused depth data. It's, and it would probably be a lot easier to do that now that we have real sensors and all that being in commercial tablets and things. Any other questions? Oh. Um, yeah. How, is there any life for the whole JS AR toolkit, the JavaScript? Absolutely. Um, so. JSA or Toolkit hasn't been spec'd out for 6 yet, but I'm sure we didn't resurrect it in version 5 just to put the nail in the coffin again. Um, I, I, I sincerely hope that we bring that to the browser as well. Great. And then last question. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Have you any, uh, do you have any published standards for dealing with multiple markers uh, or just general uh, tooling around creating experience experiences that can travel through multiple markers coming in and going out mm -hmm. so I, I guess there's a way that you can sort of create a UX around that on top of AR toolkit 
Um, it's certainly easier from something like the Unity layer where you can represent each trackable or each image as a single object in the scene graph. Um, in terms of Air Toolkit 6, there's going to be a lot of better tools around database management and sort of prehashing some of those images if you want to save time. And that should help you better organize your data for that sort of a thing. Um, but in terms of like the UX around multiple markers, aside from just representing them in space, um, that would be something that you would build on top of the Air Toolkit scripts. <laughs>